Excellent. You're all set. Have a good meeting. You Thank too. You. Thank you. Um. For one second. Good evening, everybody. Um. What I'm not seeing, Jen, is an agenda. I'm not seeing anything. Uh, and yes, I'm sorry. There we go. Here it is. There we go. Sorry about that. Barry, we're a little disheveled here. So I'm just going to read the, the blurb here to start with. Uh, good evening to um, this is May. 15th meeting of the Central Conservation Commission. Before I get into the agenda, please, just a couple of things to read. First, this meeting's being held remotely as an alternative means of public access pursuant to chap Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, temporarily amending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You're hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the town of Situate in accordance with the open meeting law. And two, on a situate mass commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, the Situate Conservation Commission is committed to providing an environment of respect during our meetings. We ask that all members to interact in a polite manner, even when there is disagreement. We value the participation of our community and want all participants, including marginalized and minoritized communities, to feel welcome and be respected. We ask our committee members and all who participate to commit to these standards and to support and respect our community. Thank you. So I have an agenda. Um, I don't really think there's anything else to, I, let's see, we need to add 162. But central. Central request to continue. Okay. Um, anybody have anything they want to speak about now or at the end of the meeting? I'm all good. Okay. Um, all right, then could I get um, a motion to accept the agenda? I'll make that motion to accept the agenda. Thank you, Richard. Second. Second from Jen. Thank you, Jen. All in favor um richard yep um doug yes penny she's not on oh no penny tonight just too bad um jen made the motion andy yes and is brendan on yet yes i am and brendan yes great thank you frank yes great so um i guess we can roll right into some meetings there will be a contempt couple of continuances we're gonna look to continue the 162 central um 181 edward foster 181 edward foster road are those the only ones that are getting continued mm -hmm. okay all right so 33 new driftway seven mcdonald terrace that's morse engineering We have somebody from Greg. Morse. I unmuted Greg. Greg, do you want us to unmute anybody else? Yes, uh, William Orenberger is with me as well. Okay. Uh, hello, this is uh, Bill Orenberger. Just by way of brief introduction, Greg, you've already heard Greg is here as our engineer as is the owner of the property, John Sullivan. Uh, last Thursday night, we've had several meetings uh, with the planning board. And as of last Thursday's meeting, we've continued this for the drafting of the decision, but Mr. Chessier has been the consultant for the town on stormwater and all matters. And at this juncture, and Greg will speak more to this, I think the site is uh, the site as designed is uh, going to be approved. So what we wanted to do is to review if there are any open issues uh, with the commission. 
uh, so that we can address these. And if there aren't, uh, we'd like to uh, close the hearing. And so with that, I'll, I'll give this to Greg so he can uh, address any issues. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for the record, Gregory Morse, Registered Engineer, Morse Engineering. Um, as was just stated, we're in our final um, meetings here with the planning board. We're expecting the draft decision and approval at our next hearing with the planning board. Uh, I've been in front of the Conservation Commission, I believe two or three times at this point with this project. Um, this is a mixed use development located at 33 New Driftway. Uh, consisting of two new buildings, the front building, building A, having 14 residential units, and building B in the back, um, having six residential units. Um, the parking lot to support the two buildings located between the two of them. The resource areas that we had looked at at this site were with respect to the Herring River, which is a tidal river uh, located off-site. Um, we had FEMA zone AE16 cutting through a portion of this property. Uh, but overall, it's a reduction in degraded area of the riverfront for the Herring River. It reduces impervious surface within the riverfront area and proposes minimal filling within the land subject to coastal storm flowage. John Chessia has gone through the project with a fine tooth comb. I believe we have satisfied all of his comments. Um, he looked at all of the drainage associated with the project as well. Um, and like I said, the planning board is going to be issuing its draft decision on this. So unless there were any outstanding conservation items, which I'm not aware of any, uh, we'd be looking to close this this evening. I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Greg. Um, Amy, do you want to have any other comments or? Um, sure. Yeah. So my understanding is that the plan set is going to change again to uh, incorporate the remaining comments. And so I guess just the risk and closing is that you're not going to have um, the right plans and you'd have to come back to us for a change of orders because our orders will also serve as a stormwater permit as well. Um, so I probably would recommend continuing, but I don't believe that we have just as we said last time, don't believe we have any issues with this project at all. Um, Greg, did you say the plans are changing or they're not changing when you? Sure, so with their draft decision, I'm expecting that the planning board is gonna have a couple of um, items that are gonna be required on the plans prior to them signing the plans. Um, the only one that I would be aware of is, is there's a catch basin that we're proposing that uh, Mr. Chessia wants as a double grate catch basin instead of a single grate catch basin. Um, the intent and the grading, the overall scope of the work wouldn't change, but there may be some minor administrative things that the planning board has us add to the plans as a result of their decision. Okay. Um, I mean, this thing just like, seems like it's been out there for a while. Um, I mean, are a couple small items like that, Amy, going to make any any difference? Do you, are you aware of how significant you think the plans are going to change? Or well, I, it's hard for me to say how significant the I mean, the changes are going to be. I understand them to be, you know, fairly minor, but I guess there were. A handful or, or more of comments that were still remaining on the table. So um, I thought the point was to let the planning board process fully play out so that we would both be referencing the same um, referencing the plan, same plan set um, in the stormwater permit. But if the applicant wants to choose to come back to us and um, for some kind of an amendment after the fact, I guess that's up to them. Uh, Bill Arnberger, uh, what, what my question is, what we're just looking, there's a number of things this, the process, as the chairman has said, has been, uh, as a, and Greg said, a fine tooth comb examination here. And what we just don't want to have is particularly uh, 
from the commission standpoint, we've had the same membership of this committee during the entire time. And we're just a little bit concerned if there, for some reason into the next couple of months, if there's a change of composition by, uh, you know, by someone uh, resigning or moving on, we're a little bit concerned about that. And I wouldn't have, and as I think Greg, other than a catch basin, uh, I don't think, I don't think there's any changes here, or if it was a change to the effect of, I think the nature of it would be is we'd come into a next me meeting and I think it would be a, within the scope of the orders and a minor uh, adjustment, such as making a single to a double catch basin. We're just trying to, what we're trying to do, and this is not in, in you know, in deference to the commission too, I, we don't wanna, we're not trying to act like uh, cowboys here is we, there's a number of things that we need to put in process. If we were, if we're closing the hearing and, and even if to say to the effect of, and, and I'm not, I'm not advocating that, you know, a, you know, uh, a decision be ready at the next meeting or in, in close proximity to that to sign, I think the revisions of whatever this is, the plan. So in other words, if, if there's any revision to the plan that's gonna be submitted to the planning board, uh, I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable with this. If in other words, if the commission, if we close this other than to leave whatever those minor modifications Greg has, so that it, as the as Amy says, that the, the the correct revision date is reflected on your order. And so I'm just I'm just trying to from a couple things sequentially to uh you know, moving forward. That's all. And I don't know what you think of that. Okay. Um, well, I hate to have these keep coming back up if if we can be done with something. Um, I guess let me move to any of the members. Does if everybody has recall of this project? And are there any other questions um, or any thoughts on, on this? Um, Richard? Well, no, I don't have any remaining questions, first of all. And second of all, um, I don't know why we couldn't close pending um, receipt of the revised plans. I don't have anything else. That would be all I would suggest. Okay. Doug? Yeah, yeah, Greg, if, I mean, if any revision, you're not going to change the plan set necessarily. You're just going to add a revision date. Yes, it would just be a revision date. Correct. So I guess my thought was, isn't there some way we could word that um, with the plan set uh, title and date in the, the um, last revision as approved by the planning board or something like that? I mean, some way of wordsmithing that a little bit so it covers us. Amy? Okay, I mean, I'm just thinking like closed pending just makes me think if it's if it was appealed like that type of thing, which I'm sure Bill was thought out well thought out. But I mean, we haven't on this board had any indication actually of appealing, and we haven't even had really any interest from the public on this project. Um, actually, so um, I don't know what to say. I I think the safest bet would be to wait. And just to continue it out till the um, plans are ready and um, approved by the planning board. And if not, I mean, we could close and, and they could come back as, as, a, as a change, either a request to amend the orders or minor modification. Um, but Well, what possibly. about to, to Doug's um, question about whether the orders could just say subject to... Um, well, I think you get it gets too conf confusing because you reference a date. The plan set references a date in the orders. Usually, it has a the the date is the the date of the plan, and then yeah, there's and a then it also oh, goes to reference the the plan the set date to the revision date. Yep, and the revision date would be the last date. Right. I mean, so I would just I guess I was just wondering if we could just say as um, most recent revision as approved by the planning board or something like that. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, um, Jen? 
I'm fine with it. Andy? Nothing to add for me. Brendan? I don't have anything to add. Okay. So, and Greg and Bill, you've heard the back and forth and you understand the potential issues, but I think Doug's suggestion is a good one. If we could put that in there. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm, uh, Bill Arnberger, I'm, I think Doug's suggestion is a very good way to handle this. We're confident there aren't any, uh, there aren't going to be site changes. There might be some note changes, but other than, as Greg said earlier, there's a uh, catch basin is going to go from a, a single to a double. Everything else has been done. This has been very thoroughly vetted. It, it seems like it from a little bit that I've followed it and the different, the change in entrance and you guys have seemed to have worked out some pretty good um, changes that, that seem to make the whole project work a little better, not only for your project, but for the neighborhood, which is really out of our purview. Um, so I, I don't see any reason to not close with, with that caveat. Take a motion if somebody wants to. Doug, why don't you make your motion? Um, sure. I'd like to make a motion to uh, close the hearing on uh, seven new driftway. Is this? No, that's not what this is. What is the 33 <laughs> new driftway. Seven 33 McDonald new Terrace. driftway. Yeah, S that's what it is. Sash left. I conflated, seven McDonald Terrace. I, I conflated them so bad they turned into another project. Yeah, that's what happens <laughs> if it goes on for a while. <laughs> Uh, to uh, close a hearing on 33 new diff driftway with the um, um, additional comments uh, regarding the plan date that um, as discussed. Okay, um, that's Doug for a motion. Do I have a second? Second from Jen. Thank you, Jen. All in favor, Richard? Yes. Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, everyone. Thanks. Have a good night. Okay. Um, 181 Edward Foster Road. We have a request to continue this to um, June 26th. I'll make a motion to continue it to June 26, 2023. That's Richard. I have a second. Second. Doug. From Doug. All in favor, Jen? Yes. Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. And Frank? Yes. Great. Thank you. Um, 14 10th Ave. This is continued. And this is Merrill Engineering. Correct. We have somebody from Merrill. Yep. Uh, Brendan Sullivan from Merrill Associates. Hey, Brendan. How you doing? Good. How are you tonight? Good. Uh, here representing the owners, um, Stephen and Mary Henderson of um, 14 10th Ave Constituent. Um, property located on the south side of 10th Ave. There's a, uh, a BVW uh, in the rear of the property. Um, and they're proposing a small, oh, six and a half by 10 foot, two inch addition to kind of square off the back corner uh, of the existing dwelling. Um, the Addition is getting no closer than the existing houses to the uh, to the existing BBW in the rear. Uh, it is in a floodplain. Um, it's not going to be a full foundation. There'll probably be maybe two piers at the most um, supporting the structure, so it will be flood compliant. Um, the rest of the house, from what I, from what I understand, is flood compliant. We didn't do the survey for this property. It was done by EET, who's no longer um, in business, from what I understand. Okay. Why did we continue this? Um, I believe it was my end. The butters weren't notified in a proper okay. time frame. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Amy, do you want to make any comments? I think okay. it's yep, go ahead. So I I mean, I think that this is a project that that you guys can approve with conditions. Um, it's as projects go, it's pretty straightforward and simple. It is land subject to coastal storm flowage, and um, within the 
50 foot buffer to BBW, but the home was constructed um, prior to the regulations. So, and, and this work is even further from the, the, the most closest uh, setback. Um, I know I think it's something you guys can close and approve. Okay. Thank you. Um, Doug? I'm, I'm good with it. Okay. Jen? Yep. No questions. Andy? Is he thinking or do we lose him from it? I think he's thinking. Were you asking me, Frank? Yes, please. Oh, sorry. sorry. I, lost, I lost audio for a second. I didn't, <laughs> didn't hear you, but I, I can see people yeah. looking. Uh, uh, no, no questions for me. Great. Um, Brendan? I have no questions. All right. Um, do we have anybody in the audience for this one? And with a couple of peers, there's really not going to be yeah. much, much ground disturbance. So there's no need for erosion control or anything like that. Um, we do show on the plan a small ECB erosion control barrier. Oh, I see it right there in the back. Yep. Yeah, Just a little bit to off the back of the existing deck. Yeah. Um, I. I I wonder if it's even really, I would almost be rather say that they just remove any excess material from the, from the tubes or something like that, but that's fine. Okay. I, I don't have anything else. Um, Frank, I'll, I'll take a motion to close. Richard, want somebody want to second that? Second from Jen. Okay. All in favor. Doug? Yes. Jen? Oh, sorry. Jen, did Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. Frank, yes. Um, 129 Lawson Road. Thank you. Op open this one. Okay. Thanks, uh, Brendan. On uh, May 15th, 2023, at 6 p.m., the Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Situa Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Property Solutions Partners, LLC, for work related to septic repair, new deck, lawn, and a single family dwelling located at 129 Lawson Road. Situate about as another interested parties are invited to attend. Information and access to the meeting is available on the agenda post on the town website. And we have. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, I, uh, um, for the record, Peter Lyons with Colin Civil Engineering Group, representing the property owner uh, for this project tonight. Do you want Good me evening. to hop, hop right into it? or? Yes, please. Okay. Um, we're here tonight with uh, for a notice of intent relative to their repair of a uh, failed septic system. Um, just to confirm, are you guys sharing this plan I'm looking at? I was prepared to show the same thing, but it looks like you already have it up. Yep. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is a failed septic system with a wetland in the backyard, flags one through 11. Um, the 50 foot buffer is shown in purple, 100 foot buffer shown, I'm sorry, orange, and then the 100 foot buffer is our purple line. Um, we found unsuitable soils in the front yard, which forced us into the rear of the property. Um, the entire site consisted of high groundwater um, and ledge out front, all in unsuitable soils. Uh, we did find a spot in the backyard that was a little more favorable. Um, obviously, with the high water, we are looking at a mounded system here. Um, it's going to be about see four feet above existing grade <clears throat> it is a pump system it's um, occurring mostly in previously cleared areas there's some minor vegetation clearing um, 
We'll probably be removing a tree in the front, just to the north face of the retaining wall. And um, the backyard has been overgrown with some briars that will be coming out for the project. Um, we are also looking to uh, remove the remainder of the briars to kind of reestablish the existing lawn limit. Um, we've proposed erosion control <clears throat> around the entire project, including the site access, the grading for the system, and then back up around the southern side. Um, let's see, that's, that's a quick rundown. Any questions from the commission? So just quick numbers, um, the proposed leaching field is 42 feet from the closest wetland flag. The erosion control as proposed is 20 feet off of flag one and 20 feet off of flag eight being the closest points. And that consists of an eight inch straw wall. And I'll take any questions from the commission. Okay, thank you. Um... Jen? Uh, I mean, it seems like this is the, the best place for it. So uh, never, never great for it to be so close, um, but I guess it is what it is. I don't know if Amy had any other thoughts on the, um, position or testing of it, but I'm good. Okay. Um, Amy, did you want to speak to that in any? Yes, I do. So sorry. Did, did, did anybody get a chance to go out there? Um, I mean, it's a tight site. So I, I think that this is definitely something that you will be able to condition at some point. Um, at this point, though, I mean, and you might want to do it tonight, I, I, I'm not sure, but there is no Board of Health approval for the proposed septic system. Um, apparently, they're awaiting some structural designs and from a structural engineer. Um, and then as far as the clearing out into the woods, I mean, I'm thinking that the post should go on the limit of work and that that clearing clearing into the woods is should be left natural um there's a nice vegetated buffer there and, and i mean it looks pretty pretty walkable if you ask me um in the backyard so i i can't even imagine where like how much farther that they would be um clearing so but the aerial that i'm looking at doesn't have property lines on it but um so maybe that's something that isn't conditioned as part of this with the septic for sure. Can we see, so the area that's proposed to be cleared, is it, does any work have to happen beyond the, um, beyond the erosion control? Uh, I guess I could speak right to that. So <clears throat> with the exception of, you know, the removal of the, the old shed that's out back, you know, the intent for that is to remove it all by hand. Um, the tree line is kind of shown, you can see where it shows briars. Uh, so right where the septic is, is a thicker area. And then it does open up a little bit, as, as mentioned, I would say it's, it's walkable to the back. Um, however, over the years, you know, it's definitely lost its use as a, you know, maintained lawn area. Um, I believe it's the client's intent just to, to continue beyond the proposed erosion control and clean up between the erosion control and the, the delineated wetland line. Um, there is a hard tree line shown in the rear of the property that flags three through six kind of follow. Um, so the intent would be to allow them access to reclaim that lawn, <clears throat> basically up to the wetland flags as it historically was. Okay. Um, 
Well, let me get, go through some members here. Um, Andy? Um, yeah, so I, I guess the, still a little bit unclear on those areas. I, I, I guess I, I would not favor reclamation past that, that certainly the, the um, barrier there. And, and then on the plan, it says deck under construction. Is, it, is there apparently a deck being built there as well? Um, on the, the southern corner of the house, I believe that deck is constructed. I think they were doing the footings and stuff when we were doing the park test. Um, I have not personally been back to the site. Okay, and it, was that permitted or are we permitting? Are we reviewing that as part of this application? Uh, through conservation, that would be permitted. I imagine they're doing a bunch of work inside. I'd imagine, you know, they have the building permits and everything. But yeah, the the deck would be a condition or an activity for this project, yes. Okay, so the deck as well. Um, and, you know, it is really close. I don't know where, where the soil tests were done. You know, if that deck wasn't there, and assuming it's not permitted, could, you, could that septic be moved away from the wetland to the side of the house? Um, no, we actually, I mean, we, we dug up this whole place. There was ledge encountered right at the end of the driveway. Um, we actually... Yeah, we, we weren't able to get the four feet of soil required from Title V to build the septic anywhere out front. Um, okay. So the deck doesn't really change that, no. Okay. Uh, uh, and then for the perk test, the deck was not in. So if that was an option, you know, we would have we would have told them to stop work on that then and just slide the septic up. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I guess last question. Well, yeah, I guess there, there's a question about conservation. I got markers. I guess I would prefer they be a little further up to in the in the buffer um, as a comment. And then it, there's talk of removal of a brush pile. Is that sort of an old brush pile? Yeah, correct. Yeah, I guess I guess I, I haven't seen it myself. But if it's just sort of an old brush pile sitting there and established, I guess my preference would be to leave it in in the wetland intact. Um, but those are my comments. Thank you. Um, Brendan? Um, I'm kind of sharing, a, well, like all of Andy's comments. He took them all. So <laughs> just, uh, I don't have really anything new to add. I'd like the conservation markers moved up and Glad the shed's going and uh, agree with him about maybe not reclaiming what, what's what's kind of growing back there in the 50. Okay. All right. Um, Richard? Yeah, Andy and uh, Brenda did it all. I'm fine with what they said. Okay. Doug? <clears throat> well, I'll be the odd man out oh there we go um, <laughs> sorry guys well just because i'm dealing with this in our own yard you know bought a lot and then discovering all kinds of things that were placed in the buffer zones that we're trying to get out of there um I, it depends on what it is like so i he says this is historic lawn i i um i don't know what brush is there now but you know like i, I um we're spending an incredible amount of effort trying to rid the uh, buffer zone of invasive species um, manually, and it's it's a tremendous amount of work. So if it's if that's what's in there, you probably don't want to just leave that. Um, in my thoughts, in the, the brush pile, I don't know what it is. I mean, if it's just um, just kind of sticks and twigs and stuff like that that's going to biodegrade and not cause any harm to the wetlands it's probably okay to leave it there um you know we we discovered pieces of concrete and pavement and everything else that um so i guess it just kind of depends on what it is i think 
um, I think that I would like to see an effort to revegetate with, if he's gonna take out old the brush that is not, um, you know, uh, indigenous to the, to the site, then replace it with things besides just plain lawn. You can um, add some little native species and things like that that are more productive for the wetlands. So it's, the, it's a healthier buffer zone and not just, um, you know, a, a, a lawn and, and then just, and then be able to maintain it without, um, um, you know, so if the, if the, if the, those markers go up into the yard, then what's left behind, um, I guess, I guess I'm just trying to say that it just sort of matters what it is. And I don't know if we want to complicate a simple um, project like this with um, too many requirements, but um, uh, maybe there's a way to just put that in the condition that um, efforts be made to um, revegetate with uh, native species plantings and not cause any more damage. I, but I, you know, again, I, I don't know what's out there. So it's really hard to say um, whether or not it should just be left or not. Is okay. anybody, anybody follow me or am I yeah. just? No, I get it. Um, let's go through the rest of the members and then we can talk about that. Um, so Jen. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate Doug's comments and I think I had missed, uh, Amy's perspective on the, on the backyard originally. So, um, I obviously wouldn't want to be clearing unnecessarily. Okay. Um, who have I not had here? We got everybody. Um, anybody in the audience for this one? Seeing so, nobody. Okay, so not to overcomplicate this. Can, one quick question: where we have the um, the notation about um, uh, I think it's restoring. Um, the overgrown lawn. So is it just a tall lawn or is it all gone reverted further than that? Do you have any idea? Yeah, it's more than just tall grass. Um, honestly, I'm not really a plant specialist, but it was definitely uh, overgrown to the point where we had to use, you know, the mini excavator to kind of push some of the the invasive uh, species in the bushes out of the way just just to get the test pits completed. So, and those are up pretty close to the house. That's correct. So, I mean, if that's all overgrown, I, I guess my inclination would be that we wouldn't want to have everything cleared right back to that tree line because the tree line is is uh, the wetlands line in a lot of ways and. Um, I don't know why that um, wetlands markers just almost couldn't run parallel across the um, perpendicular to the sidelines between the two of them, the one on the property line on either side, if the markers just ran across there. Um, or maybe, maybe back a little bit, but I don't know. I mean, the one on the um one closest to lot 5b is right up against the wetlands and then they also to just follow the wetlands line so I, I don't know why we would want to condition that um but maybe if it moved like 10 feet closer to the to the um erosion control and then just sort of ran straight across the backyard i don't know how any of you feel about that and then just let it um, just revegetate, get rid of the shed. I think I'm with Andy, just just leave the 
um, brush pile is going to disintegrate and it would just be more work or more disruption to pull it out and um, and call it a day there. I, I know what Doug's saying, I mean, there could be more things, but the applicant could always come back to the commission and request um, maybe some something more specific. Yeah, unless is is the um the, the the people that you're doing this septic for are they the owners now or is this property? Um, I believe they are owning or they do own it, and um, I think the intent is to sell it once it's all finished. Right. So. I think the shed's already gone for the most part. Okay. I don't see a shed in April. So Amy, um, you're saying that this this is not has board of, does not have board of health approval because of the wall retaining wall. Correct. Do yes. we know when the board of health meets again? Well, it, it's would have to go to, for a variance apparently. So um, I think that's unknown based on the fact that they don't have the information yet. Okay, so. Um, I guess my question would be, do you want to, do you want to go back to it where it's not got board of health approval anyways, do you want to go back to your clients and see whether or not they want to come up with an alternative, um, for that backyard area or are, are they going to, um, if, if they had some other positive alternative that the commission could think about other than that, I would be suggesting we just run that that no disturb zone straight across the property. Yeah, I wish um, I wish I could come up with the, the photos of the site just so if the commission hasn't been out to the site, you can kind of see what we're talking about doing out back. Um, it is a little difficult to see with the plan, but um, as mentioned, the majority of the, the briars and real overgrowth has to be taken out for the septic installation and grading. Um, I, I, I get that part. I, I don't have a problem doing that work down to um, the limit of work. What I'm saying is I don't think we want to see stuff reclaimed beyond that much, by much. Yeah, I mean, basically that would leave a small strip of briars and then you kind of open back up into a walkable lawn area beyond that. Um, you can kind of see the, the wavy tree line. You know, right where mm -hmm. it says proposed distribution box. So that's showing the, the tree line, you know, heading into the briars, but where the overgrown lawn area is, that's relatively clear, you know, and would be basically mobile as is. Um, it's just really the briar patch in the middle of the yard is, is the big concern. Well, I think basically you'd be taking out a good chunk of that with the... With the, um, I mean, I I I've been in back of those some of these properties before. There's a big wetland, and it even gets flooded in the winter. It's pretty significant. Um, so it's a it's, um, this is all drainage to the Satuit Brook. So we have to continue this anyway correct i would i would think we are okay so i mean like some of this could be subject to change based on whether this retaining will happen so maybe we just uh see if there are any abutters and then uh continue it since yep. a lot of it could could change but with the comments that we we're not going to well, is it anyways? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess by the message um, to their engineers, basically speak to them. Um, and I'm sorry, I forgot your first name again. Peter. Peter. So Peter could go back to the, the applicant and just tell them the commission's concerns and see if they've got some kind of solution or, or thing that they'd like to do there, if you would. Okay. Um, just... 
I guess so we're all on the same key page. Could I just maybe, you know, make a proposal that we move the conservation markers to be in line with flags one and eight? And, you know, maybe we can back the erosion control up and take a little more of that briar area while maintaining, you know, a significant portion of undisturbed um, upland in the back of the site. Well, if you put them between one and eight, then you're still right up against the wetlands on either corner. So personally, I'd like to see them moved a little further away from, from the wetlands and be right on it. You know, if it was either five or 10 feet from those wetlands lines, I mean, you're, I get that you're up against it. You're in an area that's already developed and there's a wetlands there, but we, we look to have a decent buffer to the wetlands and we know that that stuff creeps over time. So I'd rather see those wetlands markers be away from the wetlands line some towards the house in either direction. Okay. I mean, anybody else want to comment on that? But I'd like to give them some direction. I think your point. I would, I would agree with that. Okay. And move okay. from wetlands flag one and eight, move them five feet further in towards the house. Okay. And then run it across. Or more. Yeah. Yeah. Or more, whatever, whatever you guys think. Right now it's like 20 feet to the erosion control. Um, so it could. I'm sure Peter will come up with something and Okay. There's a likely chance we'll say move it closer, but okay. There's a good starting point for you. All right. Thank you. All right. So All right. get a motion to continue. How long, um, Amy, do you think this will be with the Board of Health? Any idea? I believe the Board of Health meeting isn't until um, the first or second week of June. So we're a little bit out still with that. Yeah, I would say that. The options then will be um, June 26th or July 17th. So you want to take June 26th? Yeah. Yeah, I would like to take whatever we can. I mean, we can get these revisions done tomorrow, so we don't really need much time. Um, we meeting for the Board of Health. Yeah. So... So is the meeting, our meeting in June, it's not the 21st, it's the 26th? Yes. Okay. Right, it's the 26th. Okay. And then we don't have another meeting after that until the end of? July 17th. Until, until July. July 17th. Okay. So I'll make a motion to continue 129 Lawson Road to June 26th, 2023. That's a motion from Richard. There's a second. Second from Jen. Second from Jen. All in favor? Doug? Yes. Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. And Frank? Yes. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Have a good night. You too. Um, 439 Chief Justice Cushing Highway. Um, Got to open this. On um, May uh, 15th, 2023, 6 p.m., the Situate Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under 131, Section 40 of the Mass General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Situate Code of Bylaws, began the application of Patricia Butler for work related to constructing a studio addition at a single family dwelling located at 439. Chief Justice Cushing Highway situated, but as another interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the meeting will be available on the agenda posted on the town website. And I believe this is Morse Engineering. Greg is on the phone. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. For the for the record, Gregory Morse, registered engineer, Morse Engineering, representing the property owner, Patricia Butler. As was just read into the record, this is a notice of intent. For her property located at 439 Chief Justice Cushing Highway. Uh, the proposal here is to construct a detached studio building on the property. The property itself is about four acres in size. 
It's previously developed with her existing home as shown on the plan. This abuts the TAC factory pond to the south. Um, this is the property if you're on 3A driving toward Cohasset um, from the rotary. As you go over the reservoir, this is the house that's immediately on the left after you cross over the reservoir. Adjacent to the reservoir, highlighted in blue on this plan, is a bordering vegetated wetland. That bordering vegetated wetland delineation was provided to me by the situate DPW. That was delineated by Tetra Tech um, in 2018, associated with the raising of the reservoir water levels. I believe that line is still a current DEP file number line. Um, extending off of that BVW line in red is the 50 foot buffer zone and in green, the 100 foot buffer zone. The proposal here is to construct the new building. The new building is 32 feet by 24 feet. You see it on the left-hand side of the page. Um, it's 59.3 feet at its closest point from the BVW to the building. We have an erosion control barrier around the limit of work. As mitigation, we're also uh, attaching four Cultec chambers to the roof drywells or the roof gutter system to act as a drywell and promote infiltration on the site. We are running electricity, water, and uh, septic service out to this building. Those utility connections are depicted on the plan. Um, there's essentially no change in grading. This matches existing topography on the site. I turn it over to you for questions and comments. Okay. Amy, do you want to start? Okay. Um, so I guess right away I flagged this for possible um, concerns with respect to um, increasing the development on this property um, immediately adjacent to the water supply. So um, also flagged it for um, accuracy issues with the plan and not quite enough information. So we did fund a peer review um, to to go out there and um, take a look at it. Um, I think that uh, the plan doesn't show casting BVW, which is north of the property. And also, although uh, Morse used the Tetra Tech line, I'm not sure that that line is, is still valid. To tell you the truth, it was determined in 2017. And um, I know that that project is, on the, on the slow train of not, not really sure what the status of it is. But so I guess that I would want our peer review to take a look at it. Um, so yeah, so missing flags, um, no flags are out there. Um, don't, I see that the building uh, is proposing to uh, tie into a title new, or not existing title five system. So that would be increasing the flow into that system in a zone A. So that's a um, red flag um, there. So, I mean, there's possible possibility that, that maybe this project could happen in another form, but I'm not sure how. I think I would start with correcting the accuracies on the plan. Um, as I said, we, we are ready to go out there with um, the wetland scientist and to take a look at it. So that's what I have in the beginning, Frank. Okay. Um, Greg, do you want to comment on that before we start down with members? Sure. Uh, this property had a new septic system installed on it um, about 10 years ago. It was designed as a five bedroom septic system. Uh, we're not adding any bedrooms to the site. It's a residential property. Um, it will have five bedrooms when it's done. Uh, we're not adding any flow, so there should be no septic concerns whatsoever. Uh, we're not increasing the size of the septic system. Uh, you know, we'd love the opportunity to go out when the peer reviewer is. I will make sure that our wetland scientist has the flags reestablished in the field uh, at those locations uh, prior to the site visit. That would save everyone time and money if I could be aware of when that's going to happen. Thank you. Okay. Um, who wants to, uh, 
go first. I think I'm am I back to Richard. You can be back to me. I don't think you've started with Brendan yet. Oh, Brendan. Gotta be fair. Brendan was still thinking. <laughs> um, Too bad. Somebody's got to go first. I know, but why this one? Oh. Um, <laughs> I'll flip to Richard. You can hey, uh, okay. All right, Richard. Yeah. Um, yeah, my first thought was um, I'm not sure about roof runoff or anything like that, but I was thinking that this wasn't a building that was going to have uh, bedrooms, and I think Greg confirmed that. So I wasn't so concerned as Amy mentioned about that part of it. Um, but I do think the flags have to be reestablished. And before we can really decide just how that will fit in to the to the area. Beyond that, I'm not ready for anything else yet. Okay, Doug. Well, I think um, according to the plan that the um, in the um, <clears throat> the Caltech chambers over by the studio are, are designed to collect the uh, roof water runoff from the new studio building. So if those are sized properly, then there that takes care of, to me, kind of the main concern. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I suppose we could have, I don't know how you do this, but you you could have, the, if, the, if the concern is that that tur turns into a bedroom somewhere down the ro road, there could be a, um, a restriction placed on that. Um, but I guess the, I don't know, does the board, of, board of health has to prove this too, don't they, Greg, for the, uh, tie into the. They, they do. So, I mean, that will be finished space in that building. It'll be heated. It'll have water and septic in it. Right. Um, so it is, there is potential that we would relocate a bedroom from the house out into that just as a guest area, um, it's not an accessory dwelling. It's not going to have a separate kitchen and be fully established living quarters, um, but it will be finished space. Someone certainly could be sleeping out there. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't change the design of the septic system because the septic system at this property is already deed restricted to five bedrooms on this property. Oh, oh okay. So we, we would not there, be there, adding there it. You, okay, there you go. So that doesn't have to be done again. So. Um, that's I guess that's what I was alluding to. That if that's a concern, you can always add a dude restriction that's already been done. Um, so I think, um, and I, I would think too that if you're going to reestablish the flags, that you can limit the area of the proposed construction and not there that entire line. Um, in my opinion, anyways, I, I don't think that's necessary to go all the way to Route Three A with that that's a lot of flags you got to hang there and then go out and locate so um so no i think if the roof runoff is taken care of um it it seems like we approved actually i wasn't part of it but it this 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 is very familiar to a, a another project similar to that that was built within the hundred for a studio, but um, so that's that's my comment. Okay, um, Jen. Sorry, I couldn't find my mouse to unmute. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> is there, um, maybe I, I missed it, Greg, but is there any intended uh, like pathway or walkway or driveway out to this? No, um, there's the existing driveway at the site is paved that would remain. Um, it's just lawn surface between the house and the in the studio. That's what would remain. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I I'm wondering, I guess like it's a maybe a bit of old old discussion at this point, but why could it not be moved 
closer to the house. And as a result, maybe a little bit further away from that uh, um, the buffer zone. Like you're probably gonna be in the buffer zone either way, but maybe less so. Yeah, I can I can certainly take a look at that. Between the house and where the building is proposed is where the septic system is. So I do have setbacks to yeah. there. Um, but okay. I'll certainly take a look at repositioning it um, to see if there's anything I can do there. Uh, that's that's all I've got for now, uh, Frank. Okay, thanks, Jen. Um, Andy? Uh, yeah, I guess we'll see what the review shows. I guess my one, one additional comment, just seeing the clearing in the hundred, it's always nice to see some remediation. And, you know, on this site, there's even, you know, lawn in the 50. So if, if a next draft had some remediation for that clearing, it would be ideal and maybe move things along. Um, but that would be my one, my one comment. Okay. Um, Brendan. Good point. Andy. You've got lots yeah. of leads here now. I know, I know I do. And I apologize. I, I honestly, uh, the talk of the septic system and the number of bedrooms brought flashbacks. So, uh -huh. um, I don't know, maybe the rules have changed, but I know when I bought my house, it was a three bedroom house and I had to have a five bedroom septic because there were too many rooms that were not bedrooms. I don't know. Um, so that's what I just kept thinking. Uh, yeah, so some mitigation would be nice, but just totally in the hundred or, I mean, I don't, there's nothing here to that effect, I, pres I presume. There's no mitigation currently no. shown, no, but- Okay, because this is- you know, 700 something square feet. Um, like Andy said, I'd love to see some some kind of mitigation or something. Okay. Or move that closer, like Jen was, was suggesting as well. That's all. Okay. Um, do we have anybody in the audience for this? Seeing nobody. Okay. Um, I, I've had a little bit of a conversation with with the property owner and, and family members had called out of concern for this project. Um, also talked to uh, Mr. Morse a little bit. I think, I think we shouldn't make no mistake. There'll probably be some sort of bedroom. I think the intention is that family members that live a distance could visit and be able to stay here and that the owners know they can't have a kitchen in there, but they were hoping from for some additional room. The, the existing house, I believe, is already a two family home. So there they cannot have an accessory dwelling with a with a full kitchen in it. So but it could have a, a bedroom and, and a, it would be what what they're calling it a studio. Um, and I think you know Amy's concerns about it being near the water supply are certainly um, are certainly valid. Um, and is the questions of of some clearing and mitigation if it has to go into that wooded area? I think the question of whether or not it could be located closer to the house, dependent on how far it has to be from the leaching area or grades and all that sort of stuff. It if it could sit. Um, uh, say where one of the sheds were or something. I, I don't know. Um, but certainly that would get it away from that wooded area. If it has to go um, there for some other reasons or setbacks or distance from the, from the leaching area, then maybe there should be some plantings um, or something a little bit offered to... Uh, to mitigate for that clearing, Greg, um, you know, there's quite a bit of lawn that runs towards the um, towards the uh, tack factory pond. So maybe a little bit of of um, 
mitigation in there to um, offset that would be a would be a positive thing for this project. Um, I was just wondering, Amy. I mean, these these lines are are fairly complicated. A lot of money and expenses already gone into developing these lines. We know that they're 2017, so they're six, five or six years old now. Um, I, I find it hard that these believe that these are going to barely change. Do we ever have a situation where where if Art Allen is the is the um, consultant that he could actually meet with um, the applicants consultant that they can do this sort of thing together and just walk along and and agree to this. Uh, you know, it just yeah, seems we like, often do that, Frank. I, I think that would be a good way. And if you were there and everybody just said, "Yep, I think we're all on the same page," and you know, Art and and uh, um, the applicants wetlands person maybe even the engineer were there so that you guys could just all hash out i know i know that you have have those concerns about this area and it's a sensitive area and it's part of leads right into our drinking drinking water so it certainly needs to be reviewed but um i i think if those things could be could be reviewed maybe it would help that this thing not turn a turn take a molehill and turn it into a mountain but I, I think the commission's come up with some good good thoughts and maybe greg could do that and see if we couldn't get a meeting together sooner than later on the wetlands part of it maybe before a bunch of other changes were made and i think greg's or amy mentioned something about the septic and connections and whatnot so maybe that's a question that's not in our purview but the board of health could take a look um and just determine whether that's that's an allowable thing if they can tie that back in to the existing septic system would be a would be a good thing to have worked out ahead of time anybody else so how much time do you think we would need to accomplish those things At least a couple of weeks. So, so I'd say go to that June or the July meeting. So, so June twenty sixth. Yes, Greg. That that works for me. Yes. Okay. Take a motion. I make a motion. We continue for 39 CJC Highway to June 26. That was Jen, second? Second, Andy. From, from Andy, all in favor, Richard? Yes. Doug? Yes. Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. Great, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we got 208, Chief Justice Cushing Highway. Um, on May 15, 2023, at 6 p.m., the Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Mass General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Central Code of Bylaws, to an amend an order conditions issued under DEP file number 68-2859 regarding the application of Sean Pacheco for work related to construction of a boathouse on property located at 208 Chief Justice Cushing Highway, situate, about it is another interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the meeting will be available on the agenda posts on the town website. Okay. And is this Morse Engineering? Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. Greg? I can see his. Thank you. Also with me is attorney Adam Brodsky. If he can be unmuted uh, in Brad Holmes as well. Okay. You want to lead off or somebody, one of your group? Sure. Sure. Adam Brodsky, can you hear me? Sure, can we you got you. 
Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. My name is Adam Brodsky. I'm an environmental and land use lawyer representing the applicant, Sean Pacheco. As you know, Greg Morse, our registered professional engineer, and Brad Holmes, our professional wetland scientist, are on the hearing this evening. We're simply seeking to amend the order of conditions, uh, order of condition issued in February 2022 for the construction of a boathouse. The proposed amendment will reduce the size of the boathouse and move it further from the wetlands. You're all familiar with DEP Wetlands Program Policy 85-4, which concerns amended orders. DEP recognizes amendment of an order of conditions would be reasonable if the changes are relatively minor and will have unchanged or less impact to interest under the Wetlands Protection Act. The factors to be considered include one, whether the purpose of the project has changed, two, whether the scope has increased, three, whether the project meets performance standards, and four, whether potential for impacts will be increased. And in this matter, there's no change in the project purpose. It was permitted as a boathouse and will remain a boathouse. The scope has decreased, as Greg will explain, uh, we're going from a two-story to a one-story structure, and if I'm correct, uh, the total footprint of the project will be reduced. The project continues to meet performance standards, and lastly, uh, the potential for impacts are lesser. We're moving the project further away from the wetlands. So this amendment falls squarely within the policy, and an amendment would be appropriate under these circumstances. So with that brief introduction, I'll turn it over to Greg to explain this in more detail. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you, Adam. Great. Thank you. For the record, Gregory Morse, registered engineer, Morse Engineering. Um, as Adam just said, this is a request for an amendment. This was a project that was approved uh, at this location. Uh, we feel that it's in, that it's uh, acceptable as an amendment uh, because it is further away from the wetlands. It does not change the scope of the project um, and reduces the overall impact of the project. Um, in looking at that and making those statements, uh, the limit of work at the site remains the same as what was originally approved. Um, it proposes erosion controls around the limit of work, similar erosion controls as to what has already been installed at the site. The structure itself um, is smaller in size. What was approved was a uh, two-story building. It was approximately a 540 square foot building footprint, but then also had a second level deck that extended out off the back of it. Um, so it was a total footprint of structure of 916 square feet. The proposed structure that we're amending is a single story in height uh, and it's 765 square feet. So it's a reduction in total structure size. Um, the impervious land coverage within the 100 foot buffer zone is reduced significantly. You'll see that what was approved, um, the building that was approved was at 66 feet from the wetlands. Our revised building is at 89.1 feet. And that results in the impervious surface within the 100 foot buffer zone being reduced from 293 square feet that was approved to 136 square feet uh, as currently shown on this plan. Um, I'd turn it over to you for any questions or comments. Amy? Hi, like Frank. To... Yep. Yep. Um, well, I mean, I, I, don't, I guess that I don't have a lot to say about this. We had a real thorough review under the original notice of intent, and then we have been looking at this property quite a lot under all the enforcement activities in the um, area between the proposed boathouse and the river. So if you all recall that story, that was all pretty ugly, um, but it has been replanted or most of it has been. And so they're just repositioning the building. Um, there were some concerns that came into the office. Um, regarding more trees being cut down, um, parking. And then as far as this, this 
home itself and the four bedroom single family are all attached to the same stormwater permit. And it would look like the impervious is not changed once significantly in one direction or the other. So that would not affect that permit. Um, doesn't look like there's any infiltrators over on this side of the property. That's about what I got. Frank, you muted. Sorry. Um, it's tough to eat a cracker, I forget. Um, so let's see. Doug, why don't you, um, I think you're a little bit familiar with this. Do you want to start? Well, I, Mike, I think Amy covered it. My question was going to be, is there anything in the enforcement order that, that precludes them from doing any more construction and for us? Um, you know, approving it. The, the, the amendment by itself, if it was any other project, I mean, it's, it looks like we have a reduction. Everything they said seems to hold true farther away from the wetlands, um, smaller size. I wouldn't have a problem with it. So I was just wondering where that stands, the enforcement order, if there's an outstanding cease and desist or anything like that that we have to take into account. Uh, Mr. Um, Aberg, this is Adam Brodsky. I can tell you that the restoration and replication plan was completed. I believe Brad Holmes has submitted a report on that. And everything is going along nicely. I am not familiar with a cease and dismiss, a cease and desist that would prevent it, the boathouse project from going forward. It already has a valid order of conditions. Uh, I'm happy to be corrected on that by Ms. Walkie, but I, I view these as separate issues at this point in time. Okay, so with having you know, having said that, then um, um, I don't really have any questions. Um, okay, for, for the the amendment itself. Well, we'll we'll pass this around. If anything that comes up, feel free. Um, Jen. I had a feeling you were coming this way. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I uh, I think I'm okay. Um, given you know how how much we've had our eyes on on this uh, to begin with, I one thing I I guess I do wonder is um, whether as part of our original conditions or uh, any of the current actions on the site, if uh, it might be a good idea to do, shoot, now my mind's blanking. Um, the thing <laughs> the thing where we document how the site looks after a project's complete. And has built. There we go. Um, and as built, uh, so just floating that as a um, potential option. Chair Snow, as you know, in order to close this project out and obtain a certificate of compliance, we will need to provide an as-built, uh, uh, obviously, to certify that the boathouse is constructed in compliance with the order of conditions. Okay. All right. Um, as the other members have questions, if anybody else has another thought, don't hesitate to ask Andy. Yeah, I'm I'm okay generally with it. If it's smaller and moving away. Um and perhaps this is addressing the as built. My one question, just looking at the plans and, and wanting to make sure they reflect what's there. Um these plans still show a pretty robust tree line along 3A that is no longer there, somewhat in the hundred. Um and I guess my question is, is it just worth update, updating that to avoid further confusion? Sort of unrelated to this, but while the plans are in front of us. You want to repeat that a little bit on the tree line, Andy? I'm... If you look at the plan, it shows like a pretty robust tree line along 3A. Uh, right. That somewhat in, in the 100. And that yep. tree line doesn't exist anymore. I just don't know if it's worth making sure that gets updated for some, when people look at this in the future, they know that we did not expect that to be there. Do we okay for it to leave? 
Uh, I don't believe we did. I mean, it's minimally in the hundred, but um, okay, certainly not there now. Huh. Greg or, or Adam, do you know anything um, about that? Did we, when we conditioned that house, was that tree area supposed to be removed? So in the front yard of this house along Route 3A, mm -hmm. um, there's supposed to be a vegetated buffer. Um, it was the original intent to work around the existing vegetation and trees that were there. So we showed a limit of clearing, uh, keeping pine trees that were there along the front of 3A. Um, those were cleared. Uh, I believe all of them were cleared. There may be a couple of ones that are still standing. I don't recall off the top of my head, um, but it has been replaced with other landscaped areas. It was not entirely converted to lawn surface. It was replanted, uh, remulched, and new plantings have been installed in that area as well. So uh, it's outside of the 100 foot buffer. You know, it would come into play with. Um, stormwater permits, whether it is vegetated uh, or lawn surface, um, and it's, or sorry, lawn surface versus wooded um, or landscaped area. Uh, how it's been, how it's been built and restored shouldn't affect any of the stormwater runoff numbers when the as built's done. Uh, but the plans did originally show that, you know, remaining is natural vegetation. It has been, like I said, since since cleared and uh, replaced with new vegetation. Okay. And Chair Snow, this is Adam Brodsky. Yep. Um, the client is informing me that uh, many of those trees were cut down by national grid for new poles. Okay. Thank you. Um, Brendan? Yeah, so... Um... I probably missed something. The size of the boathouse, like I'm trying to see the other one that was there and like, what's the, like, so there's a boathouse and then there's this kind of wraparound deck. Is that correct? So that's a, a ground level patio, a pervious patio that goes around. Oh, okay. Versus the old boathouse was a structure that then had an elevated deck off the back of it on what was previously approved. And what's, what's the pervious patio made out of? Um, it's going to be a, a paver and gravel system. Okay. And then the boathouse itself is, I'm sorry, how many square feet? I mean, compared to, because it looks like it's, Yep. I can't so really the, tell. <laughs> yeah, so the... Um, the proposed boathouse structure is 765 square feet, single story. What was approved, the foundation for the structure was 540 square feet. However, it had a deck off the back, which brought the total structure square footage up to 916 square feet of structure. Okay, so there's a foundation on this, and it's 765. 765. But that deck was just on piers, I guess? Correct. Okay, so yeah. Um, I'm, I'm glad it's moving back. And then the other question I had, I see that there's a proposed, this is kind of like the tree question, there's proposed 20 inch, 20 foot wide vista pruning area. Is that like from the original plan? That's, that's not new, is it? That's from the original. And that, okay. had, that had some conditions in the order of conditions associated with it. We're not proposing any changes to that Vista pruning area. Okay. Um, yeah, I, all right. I guess that, that was my only questions. Thank you. Um, Richard? I don't have any additional questions. It would seem to me sort of like what Doug said. Um, if all the other stuff has been cleaned up, and I think Attorney Brodsky said it has, I'll take him at his word, then this would be a no-brainer where it's just an amendment and it's smaller. So I'm okay. 
Um, do we have anybody in the audience for this one? Seeing nobody with their hands raised. Okay. Well, I, I guess I got a few and I'm just, maybe I'm a little, still a little um, perturbed from the clearing of this whole lot to start with, but I'm going to start out by just saying, I, I, I don't see Greg, how you can say that there's a reduction in footprint size when we were going from 540 feet to 765 feet. To me, that looks like an addition of 220 square feet of footprint for this building. Um, yeah, the other one had a deck, but we don't typically, you, now you're gonna have a, a proposed boathouse with seven, is the 765 include the patio? No, the patio no, is so, so So this is really, I think, to be honest with you, this is somewhat, um, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm a little frustrated with this. Um, we were taking a building that was 540 and now it's gonna be 765. And then we're gonna add a patio of how many square feet? Total patio is 735 square feet. It is a reduction in impervious surface inside the 100 foot buffer zone. That, I get that. But, okay. but in terms of saying that this building is a reduction in size is, I think is deceiving, to be honest with you. Chair Snow, I believe that the majority of the new building, as well as the patio, are outside of your jurisdiction. At least with respect to the 100-foot wetland buffer. That, that's great. I, I'm, but we're I'm, reviewing the whole thing because there's a stormwater permit. So that's why we have jurisdiction under the entire site. I, I didn't suggest that there is not jurisdiction under your stormwater bylaw. I, I just think, to, to be honest with you, I just, when we start something like this, I want to be told what the real numbers are. And I don't think that that was, I, I maybe that was said that this has moved outside of the, or, or more is outside of the 100, but just comparing the two projects, this is a bigger project. Well, it depends on how you measure it, Chair Snow. It's going well, from a two-story to a one-story. Um, again, I, I'm uh, Greg is more familiar with what was originally approved. It was a raised deck and I believe patio below. So we're we're, we're we are mixing apples and oranges here. Uh, do you want us to measure the gross floor area? I, I mean, I, I can I can do the math, Adam, and I'm I'm. It's like we're going to put. I just think that the commission members should be aware of, of what's actually happening here, that this this building is enlarging significantly. Now, some is coming outside of the 100, but the, the development of this site is much larger than what was proposed before. We're doing this on an amended order and we have a much bigger structure and patio. Than, than what was proposed in the original building. And I, I think it's great that it's moved further away, but it's at the expense of having a larger building and development on that site. Hmm. I think we have a respectful disagreement as to how, how you want us to measure this and how you want us to characterize it. Well, simple, simple math. The structure itself is 765. The old structure was 540. The deck was how big? The deck brought the total structure up to 916. So let me get that difference. Hold on. 916 minus 540. It was 376 feet. Yeah. And now we're going to have a 735 square foot patio. Correct. So the, the patio is double the size of what the deck is that's being removed. So we have a building that's 220 square feet larger and a deck or, or patio versus a deck that's 375 square, square feet more. Am I missing something? No, that's Greg, correct. Greg, do you have the gross floor area, two stories versus one story? 
the gross floor area of the initial building was 1,080 square feet. That does not include the deck. Okay. So that's somewhat helpful. The floor area of the proposed building is 765. Okay. And this proposed building is a single story building? Correct. Is this like a flat roof building? I see with the yes. stairs and platforms. So this must be going up to some sort of flat roof with a railing or something. So yes, not that that's our, our concern, but that's what I'm seeing here. Can I ask a question? Sure. Is the fact that it's one story really important to the whole use of a like square footage of a for our purposes you know pro for our purposes probably not it's more what's on the ground okay. but but technically in terms of square footage there's there is a difference right but okay but we're looking at substantially more square footage in this proposed st um structure but to their point, it's also being backed off. Um, well, I, and, and again, this is Adam Brodsky. Uh, again, I guess for purposes of your calculation, Chair Snow, you're not including the deck structure. When we typically permit structures within jurisdiction, we're required to include the deck structure as part of the building structure. So, I mean, we're just asking for consistency from the commission. Yeah, I interject. Are we, are we including decks or we're we not including decks? So, I, I just want I want to see them separate the structure, the deck. We have a deck versus a patio, but we we don't include patios, but we include decks. Correct. Brendan, do you have a question? I'll I'll refrain from commenting. Bye. Um, and I think that there was a question about a, a cease and desist. I think there was a cease and desist order placed on this property when it was cleared. Um, and then there's an enforcement order to replant. So at some point, does the cease and desist just become null? Amy or, or Adam. Right now we have an accepted replication plan and which is there in the monitoring phase. And okay. which brings up the fact that we, we want to send our own eyes out there to take a look at this, but correspondence from attorney Brodsky has held us off, although it is funded. And I'm happy to talk about the restoration plan uh, at the appropriate time uh, because we simply asked but, a question or two. Uh, but as far as uh, I know, we have Amy, complied, we complied with the enforcement order. Wait, wait a minute, Jen. Just let him I, finish. And then... Okay. Go ahead, Adam. No, no, I was just noting that we have complied in all respects with the enforcement order. I'm trying to see whether or not I, uh, and here's where my memory fails me. Um, I believe the cease and desist was issued in connection with the house construction. And then the house construction was allowed to proceed. I, it's unclear to me, and I don't recall whether the cease and desist was ever related to the boathouse because that project never moved forward. I think the cease and desist was for the whole thing. And then there, there was relief given because the applicant was actually in the house and the building inspector wanted to, to wrap that up. So the applicant was able to move forward with his bank and other obligations. And then the issue was the the, the um, decimation of that property. Correct. And, and uh, I, I do have a copy of the enforcement order and it's been com complied with in all respects. Uh, the replication plan has been implemented uh, Brad Holmes can verify that. He submitted written evidence of that. Um, we are in the monitoring phase, and we're happy to talk about you know, the desire to send your peer review consultant out there to confirm what Brad has written. Uh, and I'm happy to talk about that when you want to talk about that. Uh, again, I, the, you know, 
if you believe that that cease and desist still remains in force and effect, we'd ask for relief from that because we complied with it and the client simply wants to move forward with what is, I think, unquestionably a better project, that is the boathouse project that is presently in front of you, I, I, under any measurement is a better project than what was previously permitted, at least from your perspective uh, under the State Wetlands Protection Act and the Citra Wetlands Bylaw. Okay. Does anybody else, Jen, you had something? Uh, yeah, I guess I wanted to understand from Amy what the issue was with uh, getting um, the person out to the site. So oh, the issue was that Attorney Brodsky did not think his client should be paying for that. And I can. And it's been funded, but it still yes, hasn't happened. But it hasn't happened yet because I figured this would come up during this public hearing. But I concur okay. with Frank that the cease and desist was for the whole entire property, and the certificate of occupancy did get signed off on um, because of insurance reasons. That was so, my understanding. You know, I, well. I'm happy to happy to present my question, which I presented to Ms. Walkie, which is that uh, the client's obligated to hire Brad Holmes, who's a professional wetland scientist, to go out there and provide monitoring reports. And it simply seemed to be overkill and somewhat punitive to actually then have the client pay for that same activity twice. It's not as if you need Art Allen's expertise in either locating wetlands flags or in uh, peer reviewing a replication plan. Um, Brad's task, and I don't, I don't mean to diminish his role in this, is to simply go out there, count plants and report on, on its health. And we candidly didn't think it was necessary to have yet another professional wetland scientist go out there to verify what Brad's verified in the field that he will present in his reports that he showed photographs. And so it was simply an effort and a question as to, uh, to see whether we could you know, uh, uh, eliminate that unnecessary expense from our point of view. Um, the client did fund those monies. Um, so they are available if the, if the Conservation Commission wants to send our Allen out there. But it's simply at this point, the task is counting plants determining viability and reporting back to the commission, which is what we're obligated to hire Brad to do. And, and again, I, I, I have a problem with the characterization that the cease and desist was supposed to also prevent prospective work. But again, uh, we're happy to work through that issue with you. So it sounds like we've resolved theoretically getting Art Allen out there. It, which is great. I understand. I don't think we have. The question is, the question to the commission is, do you still want to send Art Allen yes. out there to count trees and charge my client an extra $1,800? And, and yes. Well, I, I appreciate your view. If that's the view of the commission, then, then we'll comply. I, I think at this point, it is being punitive and just making this issue unnecessarily expensive to the client. It, it's fair that that's your perspective. Um, and I think it's good to always question things because sometimes the answer can be yes. And sometimes, you know, we can find new ways to work around things. But given the history of this site to uh, suggest that um, a representative of the commission, I don't know if that's the right way to characterize Mr. Allen, um, not go out to the site, doesn't exactly, even if there are pictures, I totally understand that, but it's just, it gives me a little bit of a sour taste, but I won't speak for everybody else. Ms. Fullen, why do you and want Art Allen to go out there to count the same plants that Brad I'm not, I don't really want to go through it anymore. I've said my perspective. So maybe just to clarify things a little bit on, on that end of it, um, before this hearing we had one on 
the other end of Chief Justice Cushing Highway or in the middle where they're asking for, um, there's a wet, Brad Holmes, same wetland scientist as yours, mark this out. There's also a line that was de delineated by the town as part of a project for the reservoir. And in that case, we're still asking that Art Allen at least walk the site with with Greg and Brad. And I'm I'm probably one of the first persons to say that I'd like to minimize expenses to applicants when it's unnecessary. Adam, I, I'd like to not duplicate things um, and add additional costs. But when we have matters of concerns, where larger projects say like Toll Brothers, when we have a wetlands scientist from the applicant there, and then we have our, um, our peer review or, or whatever, they, they do exactly that. They, they review that site right to the end um, to make sure that these plant materials have been established and that they are going. And I, I certainly trust Brad Holmes to do that. But in this case, given the history, as Jen pointed out, to have an additional person walk it and say, not only is there the number that was required, but are those plants doing well? That's the other part of this piece is, are these plants all surviving? And, and or any of them need to be replaced? Um, this is something that we're gonna be reviewing for I think a couple of years. Well, I, I don't I disagree with you, Chair. If so I no. can jump in. I'm sorry, Ed. Sure, yes, Brad. Uh, I can jump in. Brad Holmes, um, wetland scientist, uh, yep. overviewed the restoration here. Um, I don't know if the commission has reviewed the completion report. We did submit a completion report after the work was done in the fall with photographs. I don't know if the commission has reviewed the spring monitoring report, um, but if you had a chance to look at that, you'd, you'd see the detail and the the site conditions, um, which sounds like the site conditions are up for question. My thoughts are if, you know, $1,800 can buy a lot of plants, not that we need to add any plants, but that's certainly an expense on top of uh, what's been done. If the commission hasn't seen the photos or would like to meet me on site, I could do that. I'm just trying to work in the middle here. Um, and Jenna, you, you said you had concern if you haven't seen the photos and haven't seen the site, maybe we could do that. Thank you, Brad. And, and Chair Snow, I was just making the point, I agree with you. If it's a question of delineation, such as on Ms. Butler's property, it makes perfect sense to have Art Allen out there. If it's a project, the scale of Toll Brothers, um, I would expect that you would want to have independent monitors um, there are probably construction monitors that are required by the planning board also. It's a question of scale for each of the projects. Okay. This is a single family project. Well, it, it, I think to your point, they're the same project, but they're, they're different projects. We have a, a project that you want to move forward on this boathouse, and, and then we have a restoration project going on. And if the restor if the commission feels the restoration projects up the snuff, then it's a matter of whether they think that this boathouse is. It, and what you're doing is you're amending the orders. It's not a minor modification. You are amending it, so you can change that. You've already conditioned this. You can change that plan if it's along the parameters of what's been done. But it is a a, a larger project. It's just something. You need to look at that and say, do you want to amend the orders to allow this this project? Does anybody else have any questions or comments? Uh, I do. So, Greg, what can we put an infiltrator on this side of the road? You absolutely can. Sure. Um, we didn't originally do that on the boathouse because it's uh, land subject to coastal storm flowage. It's the hundred year floodplain is right there. So we're not discharging water off site, you know, outside the floodplain. But you absolutely could attach the roof to infiltrators if you wanted to. Yes. 
Thanks. Okay. Anybody else? Does anybody want to make a motion? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I would make motion to close. Okay. Um, well, no, is that the right thing on an amendment? Yes. What you do? Yep. I would make it a motion to uh, close um, 208. That's just Chief, yeah, CJC CJC Highway. Highway. Okay. Uh, requ request for amendment. So a motion from can, Doug. Go ahead. Jim. Can Amy say what uh, accepting what closing this means in terms of like action moving forward? Sure. So it would mean we're not accepting any more information on it, like written documentation as part of the record. Okay. I'll, I'll second that, Andy. Second from Andy. All in favor, Richard? Yep. Uh, Jen? Yep. Brendan? Yeah. Yes. And Frank, yes. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Chair Snow, are, are you going to be addressing uh, this matter again under enforcement? It's also on the agenda. Um, yeah. And why don't we do it right now? But you guys are all here. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. So, Amy, we're, I mean, we've probably already pretty much discussed all this. Um, so, where we are on this one is, is that we have a spring monitoring report, which has been sent out in, in, in the file from Brad Holmes. And we would like to uh, send our peer review out to document the conditions that their scientist says, um, other than that, we have this amendment on the table, so. And Chair Snow, this is Adam Brodsky. From our perspective, we would like direction from the commission on incurring the additional $1,800. And if the commission does believe that the boathouse project is subject to the cease and desist, we'd ask for a relief from that cease and desist because again, we've complied uh, with all of the terms of the enforcement order. Okay, thank you. Um, does anybody want to um, address this? Amy, do you want to add any comments to that or any any members want to, I could just go through the, the list here. Do you want to add anything, Amy, first before I do? Um, uh, you, you can help the really. members with questions as we go forward. Uh, Richard? Um, well, I would say it this way. In terms of the additional money and all that, any monies that are being charged are solely the responsibility of the, of the applicant who broke all the rules in the first place. So any blame for having to spend money, I think goes back to the applicant. But having said that, I do think there is duplicity here if, uh, if we're having both Brad and Al um, go over this. I'm not out to save the applicant money. I'm really not, but I do think it's, it's duplicitic. And so, you know, I'm a little bit in a quandary about that. In terms of the cease and desist, yeah, I, th I think we could wave it off in terms of the boathouse. I hope I said that right, but I think that you can get it. All right, Richard. Yes, I think that was, I think that seems reasonable. Um, Doug? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I always struggle with this because um, 
there's professionals involved and then we get other professionals to check the other professionals and um, in some cases it can get really expensive and and more than that it's you know it just it belabors things and goes on i i to be honest, I, I I would be fine with with Brad's report in probably any you know normal you know situation. Maybe we can say this one's not normal because it's a there's it's an enforcement order, and it was upsetting to a whole lot of folks involved, including neighbors. Um, so maybe we're looking at this more critically. Um, but I'll have to be honest, like I, I'm, I would probably be fine with um, Brad's report on its own, but I'm not, it's not a hill I'm gonna die on if the rest of the commission right. <laughs> wants to see that. That's right. Okay. Um, I, I don't have Penny here. Jen? Uh, I support having Art Allen out on the site. Um, and that's it. Okay, Andy. Um, yeah, I mean, I, at this point, I guess I would prefer to be thorough and have art out there with the plans as a representative of the commission, um, thoroughly review it on our behalf. I, I feel like there's been a lot of moving pieces to this. Um, found issues along the way. So I would, I would prefer we have our, uh, as our representative, go out and confirm everything. All right. Um, thank you, Brendan. I am, I am squarely on the fence. I, um, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a, a game time call, I guess, if there's a vote. So, you know, I get the whole idea of, you know, it's, it's checking other professionals work and all that other stuff and having to but it, uh, this case is is uh i feel exceptional but so yeah i'm on the fence i i really don't have anything to say at the moment right now it's not a picket fence <laughs> no it's never a picket fence it's actually quite a wide fence it's very comfortable cushioned on the top <laughs> all right um so I be uh I have not looked at Brad's spring report or photos um to comment one way or the other. Um I guess I'm happy to do that first before we make a decision to ask Art to go out or not. Um So I, I don't want to kick the can down the road a little bit, but I, I also feel Brad can give us a, a, a fairly good idea on where we are with that. Um, but if I get out, if I looked at the report, got out there, looked at the the plants, and then had some questions, um, I mean, I guess I'd be feel comfortable going over them with Brad first before. Um, before we went any further, how, how long do we monitor this growth? So two years or three? For three years. Three years. So we're going to get reports back from Brad for three years, right? That's that's what we're hoping. We and then when this project's completed, we're going to get a and as built from Morse Engineering. On the boathouse and, and the construction that went on around that. Yeah, it'll all come in with a certificate certificate of compliance, although we do know that that's a lax point. Oh, that we were talking about. Is there a interim as built on the main house and i guess it is this plan serving as that or are we saying that i'm lost 
because I'm not sure about calling out for the interim as built. But anyways, we're going to be monitoring it for a long time, Frank. Okay. Um, well, I, I probably would agree that the uh, cease and desist could be lifted. Um, and I guess I would... I'd like to look at Brad's report before I had the applicant spend that money. So maybe we can, I can get a chance to, did you send those out to us, Amy, or can they be sent out? You should have them. Okay. But I'll, I'll, we'll resend them just to make okay. sure. All right. And um, we don't have to decide that tonight. Okay. Cheers. No, we're, we're, we're the, Thank you very much for considering our request and we have no problem with that. Would it make sense to have a motion so that there's something in the minutes to indicate that the commission has agreed to lift the cease and desist and allow the boathouse project to go forward, please? Well, well, we, um, we agreed to close the hearing. So do we give a separate set of orders yeah, so you'll yes. get an amended order. Um, but the cease and desist is separate from the order. But the, so the cease and desist we can lift yes, for for the work on the site. But until you get a set of orders for the boathouse, I, I don't think you have the ability to move forward. No, uh, we're not going to be able to move forward because we're going to need a building permit also. Right, so but, just, but, but just, the same, same as any other project. What, we're closing the hearing, then we'll get revise our orders. And then once you have those, right? Yes, sir. We're, I'm just clarifying. I just want to make sure that there's something in the minutes that reflects that the commission has agreed to lift the cease and desist and to allow the boathouse to go forward. Obviously, once we have completed all of our other permit aid um, uh, in order to do the project, that's all. I, I have no problem saying that the commission lifted and we can have a vote on the on the um uh cease and desist cease and desist. The other part will follow the same as it would any other um project. Once you get yes, the sir. orders, then you can, you know, Amy will notify the building department that there's a set of orders and then they can move forward. Uh, agreed, and we'd have to wait the appeal period and, and apply with all yep. of the conditions, the pre-construction okay. notice, the sign. Yes, sir. Yep. All right. So uh, do we want a motion to lift the season? Do we need that, Amy, or can you just do that? No, Adam's asking you to make that motion, so I guess make the motion if that's what you're thinking, or if you want to wait, you should wait. Either way. I, I don't have a problem with the season. Lifting the cease and desist, although I, I guess there was already a there was a order conditions to construct the old boathouse, but now you have something new. So no construction should start or, or anything until the orders are issued. We we can I I think we should just we we agree entirely. We can't begin construction until we have a final amended orders, the appeal period has run, and we have a building permit. I, 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 yes. In our, so we're, we're, we have no disagreement. I just wanted to clarify on the record in the enforcement matter uh, that the cease and desist has been lifted and that when the boathouse project is fully permitted, we can proceed just to avoid any confusion in the future. Right. I, I'd right now I'd accept a motion from a commission member to lift the cease and desist order. I'll make that motion to lift the cease and desist for the boathouse. It's Richard. Do I have uh, a second? Second, Andy. Andy, all in favor? Doug? Yes. Jen? Uh, Jen had to drop. Oh, okay. no. She's here. She's just on mute. So just proceed. Jen, Andy, she's muted for some reason. Yes, and Brendan, 
Yes. And Frank, yes. Okay. Thank you and good night. Good night. You too. All right. Um, we go on to some of the um, administrative items. Yep. 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 162 Central. What was that for, Jeff? That was to be continued. But That's I didn't to be continued. On, I didn't oh, see it on the agenda. I didn't do that? I'm just going to make a motion to continue 162. All right. All right. Make a motion to continue 162 Central Ave to when? June 5th. June 5th. 5th. I'll make that motion to continue 162 Central Avenue to June 5th, 2023. That's Richard. Second from Doug. Doug, all in favor. Andy? Yes. Brendan? Yes. Frank? Yes. Did Is Jen done? Did she have to leave? Yes. OK. Or if she's, if she's not on the call, but she's still on, maybe she's maybe she can come back. But I think she's. Okay. She's blank. She's she, gone. Yeah. Okay. She's muted. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So we get that one continued. Okay. So should we just go through the administrative items? Yep. And just be, uh, as far as the enforcement goes, I wasn't intending on discussing all of the projects listed, Frank. Yep. Okay. Just I'm just trying to give an idea. <laughs> give of, us idea how much is out there. <laughs> of, of, yeah, just who's like letters that have been sent and EOs that are out there. Okay. Um, and I mean, if you want to discuss some of them, you can, but but otherwise, um, just so you know, I mean, you know, this is this is a lit, a big list that's developing here, and actually, we've had some a pretty positive response to the letters that we've sent out, so that's encouraging. Most people are saying they they didn't know, you know, oops, sort of thing. Um, so, anyways, but all right. So on to B, C of C's. So one is for storm damage repair, and then another one for old septic system, like really old. The order number was sixty eight dash ninety two. So that's really oh, old. That is old considering okay. we're in the 3000s now. Um, so those will be issued. Request for minor modification. We have two of them. So these are requests that they're hoping that, I, so we sent the packages forward to you to see that, um, you know, what the engineers are claiming is that these are minor in scope for the changes and that, so we're just to accept the modified site plan under existing orders rather than um, amending the orders um, that they have. And so I know that um, Brendan Sullivan, actually he, he was on, if he's still on, I'm not sure, but I wasn't intending for there to be a presentation because the information pretty much speaks for itself. Um, Are you okay with these? Well, I think that I think I'd maybe like you to take a look at the 17 old farm road orders, but I mean, it's, it's a little more complicated um, in scope. Can you pull that up, Jen? I yeah, that's it. it right here. So they're, they're changing an addition location and adding something by the garage, reworking the patios. Um, that's, but it's it's not. The square footage is is pretty no nominal, like three hundred square feet or something like that total. Right, and it's oh. on the the street side, so it's not pushing it closer to the wetlands. Right. Yeah, none of the proposed work is closer to the wetlands than it was before. Um, I don't see why that couldn't be a minor modification. It's the red hatched area that we're looking at, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So that's right. like that that in the deck, right? The deck on the on the front and the left side. Yeah. Yeah. There's a set of orders on this project right now, right? Correct. Okay. From from not too long ago. Yeah. Um so Richard. I don't have a problem with that. Doug? No, it looks like they actually, as far as the, the, um, looks better. The, yeah, uh, the, the pavement area, they taking what was in the front of the house and moving it to the front of the new addition. So it's almost a swap there. The apron? Yep. So that's really not, not anything new. So it's really sub, the only substantial thing I see is the hatch red area, which is the addition in front of the, so that doesn't seem like a big deal. That seems minor enough to me mm -hmm. right, to be considered minor. Um, Andy, did I ask you? I can't remember. No, but I'm okay. Okay, Brendan? I'm good too. Okay. Frank, on the Fine. other one, the on the Alden, it's listed as Alden Street. I think it's Alden Ave, if it's Alden Ave, um, Humrock. Unless there's an Alden Street in town. No, it's it's Hummerock. Okay, so it's Alden Ave then. It's not a big deal. I'm just pointing wait, it wait. out. At least the, the street sign says Alden Ave. <laughs> yeah. Okay. My yeah, opinion. and this one is the orders were from pretty recently too. And it's in land subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, and they're proposing to enclose um, an entrance, which had, uh, which was existing deck. So I think on this one, it's a, it's, it doesn't change the footprint particularly, nope. but I think it's gonna be a building commissioner call as to whether they can do what they wanna do. So I would say that this one's okay also. Yep. Just if it, if it matters at all, it's Alden Ave, not Alden Street. Mm -hmm. I know it says Alden Street on this drawing, but street sign and you pull up the house, it comes up as Alden Ave. Okay. So Richard, you're on uh, Doug. Oh, that I, I think I'm cool with this one too. Andy? As far as being minor goes. I may be misreading it, but it, it says it's on, on pilings, but it's intended to enclose a cellar entrance. That's not adding up to me, I guess. Am I, am I miss, is, is it open underneath? Like, I don't know how you can enclose a cellar entrance and have it elevated. Yeah, I think there's flood vents on this one. On the main house. Yeah, I think it's an old house that would, would have had a, a cellar, it probably still does. I'd have yeah. to go down, I gotta refresh my memory. I'll go down there tomorrow and check. But... Right, but then it says that the proposed oh, addition right. is on like footing. How, how do you? But it's enclosing the cellar. Yeah, how do you get to that? It's about and the, and the reason I, I'm particularly concerned, it doesn't show the, the the house to the side. But if that if that's enclosed, I depending on what's going on to the right there, I mean that could really change the the flow of the water. So it says proposed addition on footings. On footings. The question is, how do you get into the cellar? It, well, I think it was it was conditioned on footings. And now they want to enclose it. I got to take a ride down there tomorrow. Oh, but it I says proposed it. addition on footings. I know. But you're running you scope that out and talk to Amy about I it. I promise you, I will go down there tomorrow and check that out because that you're right. Okay, so we'll hold sense. off on that one then. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because the letter the letter says to enclose a cellar entrance. Yep. So I will go down there tomorrow morning. Okay. All right. Thanks for saving us the trip, Richard. No worries. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're welcome to come over anytime. It's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Um. Is there anything on these enforcements that 
jumps out that you want to give us a specific on, or we just know that all of them are in form, some form of um, activity? Do we have any that we need to take more action to get the people to, to respond, Amy? At this point, I don't think so. At this point, well, I mean, there's a few people that haven't responded yet, but there, most people have responded and it's going to be me, me out there meeting with them and trying to make an assessment as to whether there's actually um, what kind of a problem there really is. So. I would just say if you have some that haven't responded, can we get them some sort of registered letter or? Yeah, we sent registered and by regular mail. That's, yep. that's when we found that people aren't picking up their registered mail. So we really are forced to send it both ways because they, they intentionally don't, I don't know, go to the post office or they're too busy or something like that. I don't know. But if it's regular mail, we, I mean, after this weekend, we had the phone was buzzing off the hook. Um, today so okay well if you have any, if you have any that haven't responded do we need to have them served or yeah that's a possibility but we're still it, it, i'll let you know if that's the case a uh, one of them ends up being um eight westgate we ended up getting a call from morse associates saying that they are representing that um homeowner so that oh, was good. that look like it was at bank owned property in the yep. neighborhood. But so, I mean, the thing is we, we have access to aerials from mid April. So it's pretty hard for people to, to dispute things that have happened. You know what I mean? It's like, we've got pretty good accuracy um, on the air as well as on the ground. So it's good. Okay. Um, Amy, you and I met earlier this year with town council before town meeting to discuss like the issues with Kevin's way and a couple of things. Have we ever heard back from him on any of those things? Not from, not on Kevin's way. No. Karen also sent them a letter too. I know. So is that something that we should loop back in with town council? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you don't mind just Oh, and here, here's one is that, you know, there's aquaculture that's being proposed in Cohasset. Yeah. Situate Cohasset Harbor. Um, or it's not Situate Harbor, it's Cohasset Harbor, but off in Situate proper, I guess. But, mm -hmm. but anyways, so um, in conversations with those, um, some individuals that have been involved in those discussions and so on, um, one of the questions was, should they be filing with conservation? And so from the state, the state fish and game are saying that it's actually sort of optional whether they file with the town. Um, but I, I thought that that would be a good question for town council. And okay. also thought that maybe I would run it by you guys to see if you had um, a preference right out of the gate as to whether you would like to see those filings because it's probably going to be a pretty generic filing on about aquaculture and what how how and what they're going to do out there um and it would be a, also same thing it would be a um, generic set of orders conditioning the uh, use of the property um i'd like to get town council's opinion um and give that information to the commission and let the commission dwell on that a little bit. I think that makes, we, we don't have a lot to really discuss until we have a little more information on it. Maybe, maybe if we get town council and then actually a little map or something that commission members could, could have a better understanding of what's actually going to happen. That makes sense. Yes. Um, I mean, I, I'm really unclear on what they'll be thinking about putting out there if there's actual framework or I, I just don't know what that entails. So I think it would be a good idea to get a little bit more information together 
and an opinion from town council and then bring that to the commission so we could all have something reasonable to to consider yeah that sounds good is it if they can uh, get a summary of of what the activities proposed activities are all about yep if there's any kind of sketch any anything that would just help in terms of knowing how how that works um I, I think that would be the best way for us to to weigh in well like a lot of these projects um you know they it's mostly state agencies that are approving this and there's just there's actually a streamlined way to approve um these minor aquaculture businesses mm -hmm. through the state to get them up and running. So um, I think that that's the avenue that this applicant is pursuing. And the town does have, um, you know, rules that they voted in place so that it's like actually um, gives the business some standing. Yeah. I mean, if they were just going out and seeding an area, to me, that would be a no brainer. But if this involves actual infrastructure nope no infrastructure they haven't been approved for that so they're literally just going to be seeding an area yeah huh. and then in putting in and taking out every day what what does that mean taking their equipment in and out every day so there is equipment involved well there's boats oh involved. oh yeah, and there will be like some anchors on the ground. I think they have to anchor like the traps or something like that to the, to the you know, the ground. Well, I guess if there's, if there's equipment or structure or something, I, I think that's would be something to be curious about. Yeah, but no, no houses though, is what I was told. No, but I, I guess let's, let's see if we can get a little bit of information so we can, because we're just kind of, conjecture here let's yeah maybe we can find out a little bit more about what, what what they're actually proposing to do okay sounds good okay um okay so you've got minutes four three and five one they're good and then you've got we we'll do a motion on those Somebody. Yep. I'll, I'll make them go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for 4 3 2023 and 5 1 2023 as written. That's Andy to second. I'll second that. From Brendan. All in favor, Doug? Yes. Richard? Yep. Frank? Yes. Thank you. And then and order then conditions. You've got orders. We have, we have a hand up. Okay. Well, you guys can finish your business before the hand, you answer the hand if you want to, because this is administration part of it, administrative part of the meeting. Okay, so we have 61 and 63 borders. So that's the, uh, that's the uh, dock, right? Yep. Anybody? Have any uh, thoughts or on a motion? I'll make a motion to accept those. The 61 Border Street, 63 Border Street, as written. So that's Richard. I would second those. Brendan, all in favor, Doug? Yes. Andy? Yes. Frank, yes. Uh, Central Ave, Fourth Cliff. Fourth Cliff. Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept Central Ave, Fourth Cliff as well. That's Richard. Do I second? I would second those. Brendan, all in favor, Doug? Yes. And Andy? Yes. Okay. Um, number one, Hollett Street. Somebody else, because I know I read them, but I don't remember. Could, can I actually make a comment on those? Uh, yep. I, I'm, I'm good with them as written. I just, I'm not sure what the communication normally is when, when these go out, but it may be worth some extra communication to the applicant about what's conditioned because there's a, if you looked at the email this week, 
you know, she's saying she wants to put up a fence that will keep coyotes out of the yard and the dogs in the yard, but then is attaching um, John, uh, John Zimmer's letter saying that specifically that the, and, and we're going to condition it that that the fence will not prevent wildlife from traversing the yard. So it's, I just want to make sure that the applicant's not going to see a coyote in the backyard because it's a fence that the coyotes can go over and under and, and want to you know, have enforcement later by fortifying the fence or something like that. Right. There's just a little um, discrepancy in, in the applicant's desire for what the fence will do and what we're conditioning the fence to do. Oh, so it's basically like a little deer fence and then. Um, yeah, it, 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 I think, I mean, we're saying it's going to meet DEP requirements. I think John was specific about things like four to six inches above the ground. Top, so you know, they, so cr things. critters can crawl underneath. Right. Under and over. Yeah. Yeah. So, so right. it'll keep the dogs in, but I just want to make sure that, that you know the applicant's not going to add f add a few feet to the fence if they find a coyote back there. Okay, okay. sounds good. Um, yeah, so wildlife will move. That's yeah, that's that's that's, that's part of the condition in John Zimmer's letter. That was correct. Yeah. Yeah. Did the fence get location get shifted at all? Um. Yes. To what degree? To the 15. Okay. And the plantings got increased slightly too, very slightly. Okay. Brendan, do you want questions on that? <laughs> um, um, I have no, 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 I'm fine. I think it, it, I think it's an all replication on the, on the, on the, the resource side of the fence, so Brendan, Brendan can Yeah, I, I mean, you know, but there's, if I, how picky are we going to be? Because there is fencing that exists in the F50 foot buffer, which is, you know, high and does not allow anything to move, but it's not along the buffer. It's not along the, the resource area. It's leading up to it in the front, but I, I guess we're going so far. Um, you still need a motion to carry those two, right? Yes. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the order of condition for one holler. Okay, that's Andy. No second. I'll second it. That's Richard. All in favor? Brendan? <laughs> Doug? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'll say yes. Okay. <laughs> Doug, yes. Jeez, I was going to say no. I want to. I want to. I, I, I want whatever Brian, Brendan's looking at. <laughs> I, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, One fifty-three Gannett Road. A motion for that one. I will make a motion to approve the orders of conditions as written for One Fifty Three Gannett Road. Second, I'll second that. Um, and all in favor, Richard, yep, Doug, yep, Frank, yes, okay. What else? I'm oh, so we should go to David's iPad, okay. Can David's you all hear me? IPad. We can, okay. This is David Devendorf. And I am the agent for Aldana Hamill at 17 Old Farm Road. Um, I was wondering if you folks are going to vote on that tonight, or is that just something that's signed off to Amy that we can um, expect they, approval on? They voted for it. Oh, they did. Okay. Yes. I missed. I missed that. I'm sorry. I apologize. So, so as a minor modification, Amy can give you those um, that. So I think we're good. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You have a good night. Okay. Good night. Of course, they're all that easy. Uh, <laughs> uh, anybody else? Uh, does Jennifer need us for standing documents this week? It's always. Yes. Jen, she's shaking her head. Yes, I wasn't okay. just having you come down here for the heck of it. Okay. I'll, I'll okay. be in. 
I'll Maybe probably... we can set up an e-file for you, Richard, so you can. No, that's all right. I usually have <laughs> yeah. a reason to swing like by the... there. I just like to know. Like so the, I'll, like... I'll probably be by tomorrow. I have to come by to get some milk and bread at the grocery yeah. store, so you. <laughs> I can do it a lot shorter than eight miles. Uh, all right. I'll be by. Thank you. All right. Well, it's eight thirty. Anybody have anything else? Yeah, I'll move to adjourn. Second. Get the second from. <laughs> that didn't take long. Did right. Doug. Oh, yes. Brandon's yeah. already on. Frank, yes. Hey, you guys have a good night. You too. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Oh.